baptized already. Uh, also, there is no proof for that. All these been mentioned by some scholars, some of them like al qadi Iyad and others, but there is no proof for it. The reason they said there is no shadow for it, they use a logic, and this logic doesn't make much sense. The logic is, they say, so nobody will step on his shadow, so it will be a disrespect to the Prophet. And that's a little bit, an, uh, and, uh, twisting it too much a little bit, I guess. Brother, please state your name and occupation, and then your question, briefly. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Jamil. My question is, some people go to great extents in uh, exaggerating the description of not just the Prophet, as you said, even the companions of the Prophet. How do you break such taboos? Like, sometimes the description of the companions, they say in things which are very odd and uh, not possible at all. Such as? Such as, like, so a person said to me, like, Umar used to, uh, when, the, when the angel of death came to him he, uh, and uh, questioned him, the three questions, he got angry and he questioned the angel back. He was saying that uh, uh, some narration or some story saying that exaggerating or saying things that's impossible for them to know, such as when the Prophet ﷺ was buried, uh, the angel came to ask him uh, the three questions, then he was mad and asked him back. All these fabricated stories, uh, the companions never said that. Any scholars wouldn't say that because there is no way for anybody to know what happened to the Prophet ﷺ and his grave. Actually, there's a khilaf, difference of opinions between the scholars if the prophets and the messenger will be asked in their graves the three questions, who's your Lord, who's your, what is your religion, and who's your prophet. There is a khilaf between the scholars. There is two narrations from Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, if the prophets and the messenger included in that or not. Yes. Brother, could you ask your question? Please state your name and occupation. Muhammad bin Natullah. I'm a doctor. Is wearing a cap a sunnah? Because in our area, without wearing a cap, when we go for salah, it makes a lot of troubles in our masjids. Wearing cap, the Prophet wasallam used to wear, as you heard, uh, turban, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the Prophet wasallam mostly cover his head because of this is the culture and the custom of the people on that time. It's improper for anybody to walk out from his house without covering his head. That's improper. So the Prophet ﷺ wouldn't do something improper. It is covering the head was in that time a form of being formal, being respectful to others. Very recent time, it was a very common practice in most of the uh, countries, Muslim and non-Muslim as well, that they always cover their head when they go out. They consider this something very respectful, very respectful. You can see it in non-Muslim culture, cowboy hats and... Chinese and every culture they have this covering the head as a proper dress from this the fuqaha said the Muslims whenever he stands before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he should be in a proper dress in a proper dress so since this is part of the proper dress you should do that and it's recommended for you to do that but all the scholars said your salat will be acceptable will be correct even if you don't cover your head because we don't cover our head when we go to Hajj or Umrah and we pray. But they said it is better, it is more proper to do that. And this is mainly according, if somebody would debate that, we'll say because it's different culture today, it's not improper not to cover your head. Anyway, so that's, that's where the argument comes from. Now. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If we have any non-Muslims who have questions, please make your way to the mic. Do we have anyone from the sister section? Are there any sisters with questions related to the Prophet Sallallahu We'll take the gentleman again from the front. Assalamu alaikum. I am Afroz Ahmed. I am a programmer. I want to have a clarification on the food the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took. You know, some people say that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam consumed beef a very little amount. Has because it has some harm in it. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam consumed in a small amount. And when it comes to seafood, he used to avoid prawns and crab. And he used to say it is an uh, makru, and which is close to haram or something like that. I want to have a clarification on this. The Prophet wasallam have sacrificed baqar, cows, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have sacrificed cows on behalf of his wife, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the udhiyah, in the qurban. And that's something you do and everybody does. And from the habit of the Prophet sallallahu that he will eat from udhiyah. That's why some scholars said that's how the proof that it, he ate from his udhiyah and since part of his udhiyah was cow, 
so he must eat some of it. Definitely eating beef is permissible, is halal, is allowed. Eating too much beef is not good in general, red meat in general. Eating it too much is not good. As for the seafood, the Prophet ate fish, which is the well that the Sahaba عنهم, saw on the shore of Jeddah, and he brought some of this meat, and the Prophet ate from it. So that's the seafood that he ate. As is for the bronze or the, the other type, lobsters and things like that, some scholars said it's not recommended to eat it and the debate over that, but that's, a, that's another issue. But in general, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said clearly in the Quran that Allah have made the food which comes out of the sea halal for us without making any distinguish. So that's the general rules. As for the Prophet ﷺ, he never said anything like what you said. Don't eat bronze, don't eat... Uh, he specify any type of seafood. He never, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said something like that as far as we know. Thank you for your question. This will be the last question of the evening. It will be coming from the sister section. Sister, do you have a question? Assalamu alaikum. Assalam. I'm Mumtaz working in customs. If somebody says that Prophet came in their dreams, can we believe that that is the Prophet came, only the Prophet only came in their dreams nowadays? If somebody said that the Prophet came in the dream, can we believe that? Is this the question? Only if he described the Prophet وسلم, the way you heard today in the lecture. If he described the way he looks, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that will be the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if somebody said, yes, I saw him looks like this and that, and he described him to you, or to the person who asked him to interpret his dream, he, that means he saw the Prophet sallallahu which it means he, was, he saw the Prophet sallallahu in his dream. And this is something special about the Prophet sallallahu One of the points we can add it, that the shaitan cannot ever come and take his shape in the dream. It is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what that means that he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as you know, the dream, the dream, it is what the soul, what the soul see when it depart the body. The dreams are three categories. One of it or two of it related to the soul. The soul, if it depart the body, if the shaitan give the soul pictures, images, that's the scary, the nightmare, which you see in your dreams. This is from the shaitan. The other one will be from the angels, which is give you pictures and images and show your soul something positive. And one of it, it will be that seeing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa either seeing his soul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or seeing his real image sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And this is from the angels, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third one has nothing to do with the soul. The third one is the person's basically maybe had a very uh, big biryani meal that night and he's so deep in sleep and he start thinking about uh, uh, yeah, and he got like uh, whatever he was thinking about before he goes to sleep, you know? And sometimes because you think about something and you're excited about it, so when you go to sleep, you're still thinking about it. It's not a dream. It is whatever you're thinking of. And that's where most the psychologist comes and try to interpret these dreams. Like somebody who said, Sheikh, I met a girl yesterday. I'm proposed to her. Okay, he want to marry somebody. Then he goes to sleep and he comes, Sheikh, I saw a dream. I said, what? I saw me and her together. That means, inshallah, she's the right person for me. I said, no, Habibi. It means that you've been sleeping thinking about her. That's what it is. You know, it's not necessarily to be from Rahman. So it's something you think about a lot and just you see it in your dream. And this is Hadith al-Nafs. We call it Hadith al-Nafs. And these three categories came in Sahih al-Bukhari and the Prophet ﷺ when he said that the Ru'ya from Rahman and Al-Hulum from Shaitan wa Hadith al-Nafs, which is basically what you think of before you go to sleep. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for, for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Spread the word, oh man Spread the word of Islam Oh, fortune one Paradise must be won Paradise must be won Each day and each night Through darkness and through light Cry it out to the world 
Spread the word. Filtration purifies water. Dialysis purifies blood. Heating purifies gold. What purifies our hard-earned money? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala urges us several times in the glorious Quran. Aqimu salah wa atu zakat. Which means establish regular prayers and give zakat. Give your zakat to purify your wealth. Today, there is no better media to convey the message of Islam than satellite television. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donation to IRFI, Islamic Bank of Britain, 394 Coventry Road, Small Heath, Birmingham, UK, B100UF. Pound account number 0113230101. Euro account 0113232. US dollar account 0113203. Sort code 300083. SWIFT BIC code IBOBGB22 IBAN GB52LOYD3096-3401-0241-92 For telephonic money transfer, please call 44208-2424-321 Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.org Fulfill your obligation and get rewarded. Give your zakat to a great option you have. Peace TV. يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا. According to his plan, according to his teaching. Foundation Tawheed, cemented by Taqwa. Pious, righteous wife to build this solid.